Welcome, my Thanks so much. All right. Thank you. Stop, stop clapping. I'm not that good. Okay. But no, thank you. Thank you for coming out. This, uh, we're, we're filming a special. I don't know where this special is going to end up. Like, it, it might be Netflix or it might just be, like, on the internet. It might, and not even the good internet. Like, it might be just fucking, like, on Craigslist or, like... <laughs> <laughs> no, but because here's the thing, I've done, I've done, uh, the reason why we want to do this in Montreal, I live in Montreal, I love Montreal, I've done a bunch of French specials in Montreal, so Montreal knows me. French people, French people know me. In English, uh, people know me, but for the wrong reasons. People, <laughs> people in English know me as the guy that hurt that little handicapped boy with my joke. That's... <laughs> That's what I fucking gotta live through. Every fucking, cause, cause here's the thing, if you hadn't heard, I fucking, I got sued by my government uh, by, and I lost. They, I, I had to pay 42 goddamn thousand dollars cause of a joke uh, to the Human Rights Commission. Human Rights Commission, and I didn't pay. I didn't, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna pay either, but I'm, I'm but the, I, I found out, I didn't even know that uh, the Human Rights Commission existed. I knew that, I, I, like, there's a human rights uh, tribunal in Holland. I knew about that. I knew that human rights tribunal, Holland, they go after war criminals, they go after evil dictators. We have that here in Canada, too. And uh, they came after me, and I found out, <laughs> I found out that they existed when I saw their fucking name on, on my caller ID. I still have a landline at home because my dad's old and that's a number he knows. So. So I see, like the phone rings and I see, I see Commission des Droits de la Personne in French, Human Rights Commission. And I was like, what the, what the, what the fuck? Why is human, why, why are the human rights? I was like, oh shit, oh shit. They probably saw me on TV and they think I'm Kim Jong-un. So I was like, I was like, oh fuck, I gotta, I gotta lose weight. I gotta lose weight, I gotta puff down. I gotta puff down, I'm, I'm too fucking puffy. So I pick up the phone and, and this fucking, this woman just starts yelling at me. The woman starts yelling at me. She's like, Mr. Ward, we're calling about one of your jokes. We think you know the one. <laughs> She didn't even tell me what joke it was. And here's the thing, I'm not gonna guess. I'm not gonna play that game, because here's, if I guess right, I get sued once. If I guess wrong, I get sued twice. That's how that, because seriously, I have, I have pedophile jokes that are only legal in Thailand, so I can't play, I can't play those sort of fucking weird games. Cause, and the woman, the woman explained, it was a joke. I did this joke about a, a, a little kid who was kind of like a Make-A-Wish Foundation kid. And Make-A-Wish, uh, for those of you who don't know what the Make-A-Wish Foundation is, they're the, the people that send little kids to Disney World. Like they find little kids that are dying of diseases and they just fucking send them to Disney World. So they find a kid with cancer and they're like, what do you want, Billy? And Billy's like, I wanna go to Disney World. And they send them to <laughs> Disney World and they find a little kid with like syphilis and I don't, I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know how a little boy would get to, maybe his uncle has syphilis and he's, he's, <laughs> he's like really good at keeping secrets so they, they send him to Disney World. <laughs> and they ask him, they're like, what's your wish? And he goes, can I get a separate room for my uncle? That'd be, <laughs> that'd be nice. No, but they send little kids to Disney World. That's what they do. That's what they do. This little kid, not a Make-A-Wish kid, but uh, same, same difference. It was a, uh, there used to be this uh, TV show on, on uh, French TV here in Quebec uh, called The Nouveau Suivant that they made dreams come true. This little boy, he was a, a little boy. He was, he was a dying of some weird disease that named uh, Treacher Collins. I didn't even know what, what that was until I Googled myself. And then I found out that I fucking, for some reason, hate those people. But like, so, so, but I, I don't hate those people. But he was, he had this uh, weird disease called Treacher Collins. He's a little deaf boy. He was seven years old and his wish on the, the, the TV show, his wish was to sing for the Pope. That was his seven year old wish, which is a shitty wish. That's, 
That's a shitty, shitty wish. That's the worst goddamn wish. But he, he was deaf, so I guess he hadn't heard about what Catholics do with little kids, so he wanted, he wanted to go sing his little heart out, and he went sang his heart out, and it was amazing, for real. It was very touching, it was very touching, it was moving, I was, I was touched, and it was beautiful, and it sounded like garbage. Cause he, cause he deaf, so of course it's gonna sound like garbage, cause you, you can't prepare. You can't prepare for your big concert if you're deaf. Like even if you have the best vocal coach, you could hire like Adele, you could get Adele to come to your house, and Adele would be like, okay, repeat after me. La. La, la, ba, ba, ba! Oh, that's okay. Oh, look, look, all right. Okay. We'll, we'll take it down. We'll try to take it down. She'd be like, okay, all right, we'll go. La, 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 ba, ba, ba! All right, you're ready for the Pope. So anyway, he... Same for the Pope, and it was beautiful. It was beautiful, for real, it was beautiful. I was moved, I was very touched, and everyone here was touched. Like, it, it, that chick off front page news, that little boy became famous in Quebec. He became like French famous in Quebec. He was front page news of every fucking newspaper, every, every magazine, it was him on the cover singing for the Pope. Celine Dion heard about him. She flew him down to Vegas. He opened for Celine in Vegas. That, that was front page news. That was even bigger than the, the hockey team here, the Montreal Canadiens booked him. He, they, he sang the national anthem. That was front page news. Then a couple months went by, he came out with an album. That was front page news. A couple years went by, he came out with a, a, a a, a book about his life that was like page 30 news, but it was still, it was news. But I remember when he came out with his book, I was like, why isn't he dead yet? Like, wasn't, wasn't he supposed to die? That was, we gave you a wish. He's a fucking, he's a goddamn wish thief is what he is. He stole a fucking wish. So that joke in Canada, is worth $42,000. So, so basically, thank you, thank you very much. All right. I was like, if that shit's gonna cost me $42,000, I'm gonna get my money's worth. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking put that shit on a Netflix special. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, that joke, like that joke, the, the joke was actually like that he was, like I said that he was unkillable and then I had this rant about how I tried to, to drown him and, and it, <laughs> but, but it was a joke, it was a joke and I'd never done that joke, never done that joke in, in uh, like I only did that joke in Quebec in French because he was French famous, like he was famous in Quebec, never did that joke in English, never did that joke, but I was like, fuck it, I'm, fuck, if it's gonna cost me this much money, I'm gonna do that joke in English, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm I'm even gonna learn Spanish. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking, next year you'll see me, fuck, I'll be touring Mexico. I'll be in Mexico City going, hola, el niño cante por le papo. <laughs> no. It was weird though, because it was me, it was me getting sued by my government, and then everyone tried to make it look like it was me against this little disabled boy. I have nothing against this disabled boy. I have nothing against uh, handicapped people. I, I have, like in the media, they tried to make it look like I hate disabled people. I fucking love disabled people. I have a bunch of friends that are in wheelchairs because I, I, I drink and drive and they don't wear seatbelts, so I get, I fucking, I know a bunch of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, like, even, even deaf people, like I don't have deaf friends. I wish I did, but whenever I call them, they don't pick up, so it's hard, it's hard to fucking, but I, lo I love deaf people. If I had a, if I had a kid, like, let's say I have a kid. One day I have a kid, he's deaf, I'm gonna, I'm gonna love that kid. I'm gonna love that kid. First day of school, I'm gonna bring my, my little son to school or daughter, or whatever, the, he'll decide. So I'll bring him to school. And I'll be, first day of school, I'll be like, look, don't, don't let these fucking assholes. And I don't know if you saw what I did, because I'm a good dad. I, I blocked my mouth when I swore, because that little fucking asshole reads lips. So I'll be, I'll be like, don't let these fucking assholes make me, I don't know why I'm, 
I, I shouldn't, okay, he, you have no idea what I'm talking about now. But I'll be, I'll be like, don't let these fucking assholes make fun of you for being deaf. You're deaf, who fucking cares if you're deaf? Anything you want to be in life, little, little man or, or girl or boy, whatever uh, they, if whatever you want, you can be. Like all your dreams can come true. If you want to be a dentist, you can be a dentist. You can be, a, you can be a, I don't know what little kids want to be. You can be a hockey player, a football player, whatever you want to be, all your dreams can come true. And I'm gonna encourage my little kid, no matter what he wants. The only thing that'd fuck me up a little would be if he'd look at me and go like, I wanna sing. <laughs> and then I'd be like, oh, oh, fuck! I'd call my wife and I'd be like, ah! He's only five, it's not too late for an abortion. We can, <laughs> we can all, <laughs> we're good. Me, me. <laughs> Meet me at the river, we'll drown him. It'll be... <laughs> See, I'm allowed, I'm allowed drowning him, because he doesn't exist. Because he doesn't, and he's my son, so I'm allowed drowning him, because he doesn't. And it's mostly, it's not because he's my son, I, but I think it's because he doesn't exist. Because you can drown someone that doesn't exist, right? You could, like, I could, down, I could drown him. I could even have sex with him. Like, he's... <laughs> Cause he doesn't exist. No, fuck you. He doesn't exist. I could, I could drown him in my jizz. Like I could drown, and I know I can drown him in my jizz. Cause I, I don't take chances anymore with my comedy. Like I'm, I want, like I don't want to take risks anymore. I want to be like more of a mainstream comic. I want to be known as like the, the, the French Canadian Ray Romano. So. <laughs> When I, when I thought of that joke, I was like, God damn, that's fucking harsh. So I first, like, I called the cops just to make sure it was okay. Like, I called, dialed 911 on myself, and I was like, look, there's a little boy. Okay, he doesn't exist. He doesn't exist, but I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, uh, drown him and maybe fuck him? Is that, I don't know in what order, but is that, is that legal? And they were like, Mr. Ward, stop calling here. So I know, I know, I know it's legal. <laughs> you, guys, you guys are the best. That, because here's the thing. I got like a lot of people. Whenever I travel overseas or to the states or whatever, they'd be like, "Oh, fucking, you got sued because uh, because uh, of of Quebecois." And 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 it's not it's not the people. It's not. It's never the people. It's the fucking media. The media fucked me over, and that's that's the the way I see it. And uh, the, but a lot of people are like, "No, it was kind of your joke." But no, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. No, it was the media. It was the media. It's the media's fault. It's fucking fake news. But, uh... <laughs> no, because here's the thing. I, 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 like, the first time in my life I was ever on TV was, uh... It, it was, it was horrible. It was, um... I was... This is when I was just, a, like, a baby comic. I was just starting out. I just started doing shows in French, and uh, the French CBC, Radio Canada, had come to see me, and they, they did this interview with me. And it was weird, because the journalist, like, after my set, like, they filmed my set, and after my set, he kept on, like, every joke I did about whoever I was talking about, he'd call him my victim. So whatever joke, like, at any pop culture reference, he'd be like, no, but what, what, about, what about your victim? And I was like, well, what victim? And he was like, well, when you did the Michael Jackson joke, he, Michael Jackson was your victim. I was like, no, those little kids were his victims. But he was like, no, but your victim, he's your victim. You made fun of him and blah, blah, blah. And you ever think about how he'd feel if he was here? And I was like, he'd never be here. Like, why would Michael Jackson be here? And he was like, no, but your victims. You think about your victims or your other victims and victim this, victim that, victim. And it was all this weird vi victim mentality. And he was like, no, but think about the victims. Think about the victims a little bit. Think about it. And I was, I don't know if it's because I was drunk or I'm just naturally angry, but I, was, I just, I lost it. And I was like, look, I don't care about the victims. Fuck the victims. <laughs> and I left thinking, okay, that went fairly well. So I, no, I knew I was going to look like garbage on the news. And with the editing, it was way worse. Because in those days, I had, a bunch of, I had a bunch of jokes. They were super hacky but about my girlfriend at the time. Because I couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't get her to come. Like, I couldn't make her come. No matter what I did. No matter, and I did everything to try to get her to come. Like, I had dildos. I had vibrators. I even bought one for her. But nothing. Like, she... <laughs> She couldn't, and I don't know if it's because she was frigid or because she was eight years old, but she... <laughs> See that joke? 
That joke, and see, I'm getting a mini clap now. That joke, it's a little hacky now in the 90s. That was the best goddamn joke in the world. That was the best goddamn joke in the world. Even now, it's still a not, not a bad joke, but in a club, in a club, it's a good joke. On the news, not so good. That, that, <laughs> even the first, so the first time in my life I ever saw myself on TV, it's with that fucking joke. The, the it, was, it was horrible, I'm laughing now, but it's the alcohol. But I, the, I see the, the reporter guy, like he's like, okay, tonight we're gonna talk to a comedian that takes the things a little far. They cut to me on stage with my big stupid face, going, I don't know if it's because she's frigid or because she's eight years old. <laughs> Cuts to the reporter that goes, what about the victims? <laughs> then back to me going, fuck the victims! <laughs> I should have. I should have died so long ago. Like I, here's the thing, and not, not just because of my joke, but I, ever since Uber came out, I realized how fucking easy I am to kidnap. Like, <laughs> Because whenever I call Uber, I never look to see if my car is closed. I just call Uber, I wait outside. As soon as the car slows down, I get in. Like, that's, that's the Uber experience for me. <laughs> like, it's surprising. It's surprising I never got molested as a little boy. I should have gotten molested, like, so many times. Because I'm, I'm, this is how naive I am. I was the type of little kid that, a, like, a grown man could have come up to me in, the, in a park and went like, hey, little boy, I lost my puppy dog. Can you help me find him? And I would have been like, I don't feel like it. I'm gonna go wait in your van. And I would have, I would have just fucking waited. I would have been in the van going, it's hot in here. I'm gonna take my pants off. I'm gonna, there's a I never, I never, uh, I came close to getting molested once when I was little. And here's the thing that saved me. My, the fucking language, the fact that I speak French, or, or actually the fact that I speak English saved me. But uh, anyway, it's because uh, uh, when I was little, like now uh, the French get, like in Montreal, for people that aren't, aren't from Montreal, when you come here, you see there are French people, English people, we get along pretty well. But when I was little, French hated English, English hated French. And since I was both, everyone hated me. So when I was little, <laughs> When I was little, I grew up in, uh, in Quebec City, in this uh, French neighborhood, which is uh, Quebec City. So I was like, I was in Quebec City going to an English school, my best friend Wilson. We're waiting in front of the school. We're seven years old. We're these little kids waiting for whatever. Like, uh, my, I think we were waiting for my mom. We're in front of the school. And there was an old pedophile, this fucking greasy old pedophile in the bushes. He was just staring at us. And he was horny. And we could, like, we were, we were nervous. We were nervous. We were, and we were nervous. Like, I was, I was nervous, but Wilson was afraid. Like, he was, I wasn't afraid. I wasn't, because here's the thing. When I was little, I was chubby. I was a little fat kid, but Wilson was hot as fuck. Like, Wilson, <laughs> he was good looking. He was, so we both knew if that guy's a pedophile, Wilson's gonna get fucked first. Like, we knew. We knew. Maybe the guy would have tried to titty fuck me, but that's it. The guy, no, I would have had to, I would have, I would have, Spit on my boobs a little. I would, I would have been the guy's fluffer. I would have been like, all right, that's... all right, you're hard enough. Go rip Wilson open. So we, we're waiting. We're waiting uh, for whoever we're waiting for, and we're talking. And when the guy realized that we weren't speaking French because we were in a French neighborhood, we were we were speaking English. His eyes changed. That was a deal breaker for him. He was like, I will not have sex with little boys unless they speak my language. So he. He stood fucking, he stood out, fucking stood up and came out of the bushes and came right at us, fucking charged us and Wilson ran away and I was, I was too fat to run. So I, I just panicked. I fucking, I closed my eyes and spit on my boobs and did this, but the, the guy looked at me and he went, est-ce que l'anglais retourne dans ton pays? Which is, est-ce que l'anglais retourne dans ton pays? Is you fuck, you fucking English, go back to your country. And I was like, what, what the, I'm, like I'm seven years old. I'm like, how am I gonna go to my country 
<laughs> alone. And what country? Like, like, Ward is Irish, but we came from Ireland like 300 years ago. So if I go back to Dublin, they might not remember me. Like, they... <laughs> It was weird. I used to get that too. Whenever I'd go outside of Quebec, uh, I, I got the first time that that happened. I was, uh, I was in uh, Newfoundland, in uh, Eastern Canada. And uh, they, well, I was talking French to some people in a grocery store. I don't know what I was doing alone in the grocery store, but I'm eight years old. And that, there are these two the French guys, I'm talking to them in French. And this old man looked at, like he got angry that we were speaking French. And he came over to us, but he waited for the grown-ups to leave. He waited for me to be alone. This whole fucking piece of garbage came up to me. And he looked at me and he went, you fucking frog, go back to where you came from. And it's weird. It was the first time in my life that I, like, I was happy to meet that guy. Like, Because I was happy to find out that there are stupid, intolerant pieces of garbage everywhere. Like, I used to think it was just in Quebec, but I was like, oh, these fucking assholes exist everywhere. So I hugged the guy, because that's what you gotta do. That's what you gotta do. If someone throws hate at you, answer with love, you will fuck that person up so bad. So, because for real, like for real, like if ever, if ever you're walking down the street, okay, you're walking down like St. Catherine Street here in Montreal, and there are like 10 guys that jump out of an alley with guns and knives and they're like, we're gonna fucking murder you. Grab the biggest one by the face and go, you're handsome when you're mad. That will save your fucking life and depending on the neighborhood, you might get a blow job. So I was, so this old piece of garbage was like, you fucking frog, go back to where you came from. I hugged him and I told him I loved him. En français, in French, I said, je vous aime. Je vous aime, monsieur. I, I broke him. I just, he just, he was like, what the fuck? Just, Jesus Christ. And he pushed me away, but I grabbed him by the hand. I was like, no, no, fuck face. Je vous aime, je vous aime. And he tried leaving, but I just followed. Like we, we did our grocery shopping together and I talked to that guy. I kept on talking to the guy in French and talking to him in French. And I kept on telling him, je vous aime, je vous aime, je vous aime. I love you in French, in French. And he eventually got used to me. He eventually got used to me, got used to the whole French thing, got used to my language. When I, when, when I felt that he had accepted my people and my culture and my language, that's when I got my revenge. Because as we were walking out, there was this security guard at the door and I was like, this man said he's gonna buy me a puppy if I suck his cock. And... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All of my morals end with a pedophile joke. That's... <laughs> Thank you for clapping. That, that, here's the thing. That, I really like, uh, I, the, you guys are a fun crowd. I like, I like uh, playing in Montreal. I like Quebec crowds. The, here's the thing I like the most about Quebec, uh, besides the people, is, is um, there's something here that no, no one else has in the world, is uh, Opération des Rouges. Opération des Rouges. <laughs> We'll get subtitles on this. May uh, Operation des Rouges is a, a thing that every year in Quebec, uh, during the month, month of December, people can fucking take the cars, go places, get fucking shit faced, <laughs> like they, they, and then just call Ne Rouge, and Ne Rouge goes. They get them and they drive them back home with their car. It's the best in the world, and I've never used it, but one day, <laughs> one day. No, I tried using it once, okay? And, and it didn't work out well. Cause I was uh, a couple years ago, like I, I can drink, I can hold my liquor at night, but during the day I'm, I'm like a, the biggest lightweight. I was at a buddy's house where, and we were drinking in the afternoon and I didn't drink anything. I had like two mimosas and two uh, schnapps, peach schnapps. And I was drunk just with that cause it was afternoon. So I can't fucking handle liquor in the afternoon. And, and I went outside to have a cigarette and that's when I realized I was drunk cause I don't smoke. So I was outside. <laughs> outside having a cigarette and I'm outside, okay? I don't have a jacket on. It's early December in, in fucking Montreal. No, no jacket. I only had one shoe. So I was like, oh fuck, I'm, I'm drunk. I look at my watch, it was 6.15. And I was like, okay, this is way too drunk for 6.15. Like quarter past six, I can't be this drunk at quarter past six. This is midnight drunk. Midnight drunk, it's good, I'll go home, I'll tell a story, ha ha ha, I fucking, I, I was outside without a shoe. It'll be funny, but 6.15, it's not gonna get any better. Like that's, like if I'm that drunk at 6.15, that means by 9.30, I'm gonna shit in someone's microwave. So I was, 
I was like, okay, I gotta leave. I gotta leave. I checked my pocket. I had my phone, pulled my phone out. Google Ne Rouge, call them up. And I'm like, can you guys come get me? And they're like, sure, what's the address? Give them the address. And then I blacked out, because I'm a blackout drunk. I woke up. I don't know how long it took for them to get to my friend's house, because I blacked out. I woke up two hours later. I was in my car. I was seated comfortably in my car on the highway driving. And the thing... <laughs> The thing, like I was on the highway, I was on the fucking freeway. The thing that woke me up is those little rumble strips on the side of the road. You know the things that when you hit, they go like and I, So I'm just driving out here, what the fuck? Did, who did I just murder? And then I pull over and I'm freaking out because I'm sure I hit a kid or an animal or something. I get out of the car and I, I walk around to see what I killed. I hadn't killed anything. And I was like, oh, I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky. The car's okay, I'm okay. But I was okay at the worst place that you can be okay when you're drinking and you have a car. I was okay on the side of the highway. Cause you, you can't call Ne Rouge from the side of the highway. Like you can't come go like, look, I know you guys are busy. That's why I did the first part. And then you, you can maybe meet somewhere. Plus, I had no idea, no idea where we were, but I was like, okay, for what do I do? What do I do? Do I wait? Look at my watch, it was 8.30, 8.30. I was like, God damn, I've been... So th then I started calculating. I was like, I didn't drink that much. I had four drinks, like in the afternoon. Plus, I, fuck, I blacked out, which is technically taking a little nap. So I was like, <laughs> I think I'm good. I think I'm good, but I'm responsible. I'm, I, I hate drinking and driving. So I was like, I'm gonna keep driving on the rumble strips. Like I'm gonna let the rumble strips guide me home. And that's what I did. And it goes really well. Like, and to make sure that no one noticed that I was on the rumble strips, I was driving the same speed as everyone else. So I was driving like fucking one, like I was going like 55 miles an hour. I was going like 110 kilometers and just, sh fuck, I looked like I was having a seizure, but I was, it was going so good. The only thing is after like half an hour, uh, you vomit on yourself. That's, <laughs> That's the thing I found out. So I, fucking, I threw up on myself and I was like, okay, okay, I got, I got to get rid of the evidence. I got to, because if the cops see me with vomit on my shirt, I'm losing my license for sure. So I pulled over on the side of the road, went out into the woods, into the little forest, took my shirt off, made sure no one saw me. I hid my shirt in the woods and went back to my car. Went back to my car and I was so proud of myself. I was like, you, my friend, are a problem solver. And then... <laughs> I got in my car and drove off. Drove off like a fucking hillbilly without a shirt on. And that's, that's when I realized, I was like, I'm not wearing a shirt. Like this is way, 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 way worse than, than a, like a little vomit. No one would have noticed, but a fucking, like a, a, a white guy without a shirt on in Montreal in December, like everyone, Everyone's gonna notice. Every, plus me, like, like underneath this, I am. I'm, I never take my shirt off, so I am fluorescent white. Like I am, like I'm. I shine in the dark. Like I've been with my wife for a long time. She see me four times without my shirt off. I, without my shirt on, I never take my shirt. The only time she see me without her shirt on is uh, when I throw up on myself. So when. <laughs> So I was like, okay, I gotta, no one can see this. No one can see this. So I was like, I'll get off the highway. I'll just drive the little side streets. No one will notice. And, and no one did. No one saw me. Like there was a bunch of cars, but I'd blind them with my high beams. And I, I made it home, made it home safe and sound. I was so happy. I didn't pull into the driveway. So I didn't want, I didn't want my wife to wake up. Like I didn't want her to hear me arriving so I like I parked in the street took my shoe off as I was getting out of the car so that she wouldn't hear me like when I got in the house but it was 9 15. <laughs> 9 15 at night she's a grown-ass lady like she she was in the living room she was watching tv and then she saw me stumble in the street no shirt on a shoe in my hand and she was like oh, tabarnak c'est encore vous mettez <laughs> You know what's gonna be weird for that joke is if we put this out as an audio special, like a, as an album, people like uh, people in America will be like, "What the fuck did he just say? Why? Why did why did they clap?" But I, I really like, I, I, and I'm not gonna explain it. But uh, 
No. <laughs> no, I, I, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The reason why I drink so much is I, I love alcohol. The, the, and the alcohol, because alcohol gives you confidence to do shit you wouldn't do if you were sober. Like, it gives you so much, like this one time when I got drunk, I put my dick in someone's drink because I didn't like them. Pretty, like, I'm 12% sure I wouldn't have done that sober, but drunk, it was so good, it was so good. I was at my buddy's house. It was his, uh, it was his uh, girlfriend's uh, birthday party. I get there with my wife, and as soon as we get it, the, this guy started hitting on my wife. He was hitting on my wife, and I'm not jealous. I love my wife, I trust her, and I, like, he was hitting on her, and he wasn't hitting on her, like, in a gross, like, sexual, like, like a me too way. Like, it wasn't like, oh, uh, I'm gonna finger you. No, it was, he was charming. He was charming, and he was handsome, and he was nice, and he was giving her compliments, and he was, like, telling her how pretty she is, and I was like, she is pretty, and it's about fucking time someone told her. So so I was, I was super happy. Like she, she, she was like getting compliments. So I went over and I started drinking with my friends. I didn't drink that much. I had like a couple of drinks, but after a couple of drinks, I look over and I see the guy still hitting on my wife. And then I was like, I was getting a, a little drunk. I wasn't that drunk, but I look at my watch and I've been like, fuck, he'd been hitting on my wife for one hour, a whole hour. And I was like, here's the thing. I'm not, I'm not jealous at all. Like you can hit on my wife five minutes. Five minutes, I find that cute. I find that charming. It doesn't bother me. But hit on my wife for an hour, I'm gonna put my dick in your drink. That's, that's how my father taught me to defend myself. So I was, I was, I was just staring at the guy and I was like, I'm gonna put my dick in your drink. I was just giving him a fucking evil eye. Like, I, I must have looked crazy because I was like, I'm gonna put my dick in your drink. I was looking at him, I was like, I'm gonna fuck, I'm gonna put my dick in your drink. And when I went over to, like, I, I really scared the guy because when I went over to him and my wife, I kissed my wife on the mouth and the guy just freaked out. He was like, oh, what the, how, okay, hey, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Can you watch my drink? He gave me his drink. The fucking victim. So I was like, I had this guy's drink in my hand, but then I was like, okay, where do I do this? Where do I do this? He went to the bathroom and I, I saw my buddy, my buddy Dave was walking up the stairs with a birthday cake for his girlfriend. And this is when I realized if as soon as someone is holding a cake, if you sing happy birthday, everyone's gonna go the cake. It's like a magnet. So I see him, he's like, the candles aren't even lit. And I'm like, happy birthday. And everyone went to the cake. Everyone went to the cake. Even his girlfriend, she was crying. She was like, it's so nice. And so I'm alone. I'm alone in the kitchen with this guy's drink. He was drinking, he like, and his drink was a little more full than this one. Cause my dick, my dick isn't, isn't big enough. <laughs> To, like, I, I, don't, I don't have a big dick, so I could, like, to put my dick in this, I'd have to, like, tip it over a little. So that's not what I did, but, so, but he was drinking champagne. He had champagne in those little, like, plastic glasses. So I put the champagne, and it was pretty full. So I put the champagne on the table, put my dick out there singing, put my dick in the champagne. Best feeling ever. Like, it was... It was so good, it was so good. There was champagne, and it's not because it was champagne, because it could have been anything. Like, it could have been like sparkling wine or even 7-Up, but it's just like the bubbles. I had the bubbles on my dick, and I was just laughing. And every time I'd laugh, because there were like 30 million bubbles tickling my cock, I was like, this is so good. And every time I'd laugh, there'd be more bubbles. So it was, and plus people in the background were singing happy birthday. <laughs> So I was like, oh, there's my penis's birthday. So I was, I was so happy. I was so happy. I'm just, oh, this is the best, this is the best. Hear the toilet flush. I pull my dick out of, my, uh, out, of my, out of the guy's drink, put it back in my pants, grab the guy's drink, and I rush over the bathroom door because I can't wait to get his, I can't wait. Like, it, it was, I was like, this is the best, this is the best. And I, like, I was just standing at the door and I was a little drunk. And in my mind, I was just telling myself, don't take a sip. Don't take a sip. Because I didn't want to, I didn't want to go like, ha ha, fuck, oh! I got, got, no, no. So I was just waiting there. And the guy opened the door and he didn't take a sip. Like I gave him the, the drink and I was like, here you go. And he was like, okay, thanks. And he left. 
And I was like, oh, fucking dove. Like, but I couldn't tell him. I was like, take his... So I just started following him. I just, like, I watched him. I watched him because I wanted to see his face when he took the first sip. I wanted him to know. And it was the, the first sip was so amazing because my wife was in the living room. He went over to the living room and then he checked to see if I, if I could see them. He couldn't see me. So he started hitting on my wife again. But this time he was drinking the champagne. And I was like, this is the best day ever. This was, it was so good. I, be, I became spiritual that day. Like I, for real, I, I was like, karma exists for real. You wanted to eat my wife's pussy, fuck you, taste my dick. It was so, it was so, 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 so good. I should have taken a picture. I regret not taking a picture. It would have been the. It would have been a fucking weird dick pic. Cause generally, a dick pic is like a rock hard dick. Mine would have just been like a fucking soft dick in champagne. <laughs> but it would have been the best. It would have been the best. Do you, do you, uh, do you have, have you ever sent her a dick pic? Never. Never. Okay. No. Four years now. Four years now. And have you ever sent a dick pic to anyone before her? No. That seems like a lie. Cause you. <laughs> You look like, like you're wearing, you're wearing fucking Bermuda shorts. You, you look like you're just wearing those to go like, all right, photo time. All right, I'm ready. You've never, so he's never sent you a dick pic? Okay, cause I've never, I've never sent a dick, has he sent a dick pic? Not yet, oh, Christ, that sounds like a challenge, that's. I've never sent ever, 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 ever a dick pic in my life because I've been with the same woman 19 years, 19 years. And dick pics are generally something you send like the first year. You don't start sending dick pics after 19 years. That's the worst thing to send to someone after. Like if I send a picture of my cock tonight to my wife, she's going to lose her mind. She'll be like, oh, my God, kidnapped. It'll be horrible. <laughs> I have a friend, I have a friend that's really afraid of dick pics. He has a daughter, 15 year old daughter. She doesn't have a cell phone because of the dick pics. He, he's afraid that she's gonna get dick pics and he keeps on telling me, he's like, I don't want her, I don't want her sending, I don't want her getting dick pics. I don't want her sending pictures of her boobs to everyone. I'm like, she's not gonna send pictures of her boobs to everyone. He's like, you don't know her, she's a fucking whore. She's gonna, <laughs> she's just like her mother was, so she's gonna. He doesn't get along well with his wife, but he's afraid, he's afraid that she's gonna send pictures of her boobs and get dick pics. So she doesn't have a cell phone. Whenever, whenever she wants to text one of her friends, she has to use his phone. And uh, <laughs> everything goes okay, generally. But a little while back, she met this uh, boy. She met this boy, a 15 year old boy. And uh, I don't know if they're boyfriend or girlfriend or who's, he's just a fucking weirdo that likes to send dick pics. But she texted him and she was like, uh, she forgot to mention, hey, by the way, this is my dad's phone, so don't send a picture of your cock. <laughs> the little boy took a picture of his cock. And I don't, know if you, I don't know if you remember what your dick looked like when you were 15. <laughs> Do you remember how it was? Yeah. Okay, how, like, it was really, and for, how was it? I should. <laughs> I want you to just, and this sounds kind of illegal, having you describe your 15-year-old cock. I should touch myself. I was, I was like, were you big? No, but it, like you're, when you're 15, your dick is just super hard. It's just, su it's like crazy hard. Like it's small, it's smaller than like a, a man dick, but it's just fucking way harder. Like a 15-year-old dick could cut through diamonds. Like it's, it's. So he fucking, this little boy got his little super hard fucking cock and he took a picture of it and sent it to my friend. My friend, my 41 year old heterosexual friend got a picture of a little boy's penis. And it was the, it was the best. We were a bunch of friends at his house and we were all like guys in early, like late thirties, early forties. And we were laughing and he was, he was super angry. He was like, there's nothing funny about this. And I was like, everything is funny about that. That's, <coughs> And he was like, he got really angry. He kicked us out of his house. He kicked it. He was like, I never want to see you again. He was like, what's so funny? I was like, it looks like you're jerking him off. And we, he kicked us out of it. He kicked us out of his house. And, uh, uh, but I, I got my revenge. And I told him, I was like, you're going to fucking regret it. And he did. Because as soon as I was outside, I called the cops on him. I, I did. 
I fucking performed my civic duty. I dialed 911. I was like, there's a fucking pedophile. He's got a picture of a boy's dick on his phone. Come get him. They came, they got him. He's in prison, and I'm gonna fuck his daughter. That's the way. That's the way that one goes. I'm gonna. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't, I'd never do that. I don't cheat on my wife. Don't cheat, and not because I'm a good person, it's just I don't want to disappoint someone new. Because I, I used to be good. I used to be good in bed. Like when I was, like how old are you? 24, how old are you? 21. When I was his age, I would have fucked the shit out of you. Like, for real, for real. And even, even like, even like, uh, like 10 years ago, or eight years ago, I was amazing. Eight years ago, if we would have fucked eight years ago, you would have freaked out because you were just 13. So you would have been like, God, God damn, this is, this is the nicest van I've ever seen. It's so, so spacious and there are puppies, but, no, I used to be, I used to be really good in bed, and I'm not anymore. And it's because I fucked up my shoulder. Fucked up my shoulder. <laughs> and it sounds stupid, but every fucking position like hurts. I fucked like an old man. I fucked like an old man. Here's the thing. My favorite position now, and I'm not even sure if technically this is a position, is me getting a hand job. That's the best. <laughs> fucking love that one. I'm so good at that one. And my wife knows that that's what I like, because that's what I asked for at Christmas. So she. Her whole family knows. Her brother freaked out when he picked me in the gift exchange. Holy Christ. It was, I had to reassure him. I was like, close your eyes, close your eyes. No, slow, no, stop crying, stop crying. You're gonna make me, you're gonna make me cup too fast. It was. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, I love that. that... I love that, that you're clapping for a me raping my brother-in-law joke. That's the best, thank you. That's, I fucking love you guys. Cause there, a lot of, a lot of crowds now are fucked up. Like they, people get offended like really easily. Now, like I did this joke once uh, a little while back. It was, um, I used, and it wasn't even cause of the joke. I used the word retard on stage and this woman came up to me after the show and she was like, my son is a retard and I don't think he'd appreciate your type of humor. And I was like, of course he wouldn't appreciate my type of humor, he's a fucking retard. You just, he wouldn't get anything of what I do. Like he wouldn't fucking catch his subtleties. He wouldn't, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't even find the room. Like he'd show up an hour late going, how oh, is he a magic show? And he'd be, and she didn't even use the word retard, which really fucking offended me. That offended me. Cause she kept on saying, stop using the R word, the R word. And I was like, fuck you. It's not the R word, it's retard. It's not the C word, it's cunt. The only word that we shouldn't use, that we should replace with the letter is the N word. That's the only one, that's the only one. But she was trying to steal the letter thing from black people. And I was like, fuck you, you can't, you can't compare. Like they worked hard for that. Like you can't just, you can't just steal that from black people. You can't compare what your kid goes through to what black people have been through in America for the last 300 years. That's the worst thing ever. That's an insult for black people everywhere. It's an insult to blacks. It's an insult to their parents or grandparents or ancestors. That's fucking shitty for slaves. That's even an insult for slave owners, cause no slave owner would have bought a retard. I'm sorry, he would have been the worst fucking slave ever. You'd be like, fucking slave, I put him outside to pick cotton, he's eating the cotton. What the fuck? God damn it, God damn it. Every time I whip him, he hugs me, that's no good. <laughs> no. I, I had this woman once, I got a, um, when uh, Patrick Swayze died, I used to do this show on uh, Music Plus, which is a uh, French MTV, but the, like you guys know, cause you're fucking, you're all from here. And, but, and everyone here is French, but anyway. So I used to do this show on uh, Music Plus and this, uh, I, when Patrick Swayze died, I, 
improvised the joke that it was my way of showing that I respected him and it was to pay homage to Patrick Swayze. And I showed a clip and I was like, Patrick Swayze was the best. And I, it was a clip of Dirty Dancing. And then I showed a clip from Ghost. And I was like, he was so, he was romantic and he was sexy and he was a good dancer. And I was like, good thing I'm not gay because if I was gay, I'd dig him out of the ground and I'd suck his cock. <laughs> A tribute. And then, <laughs> this woman heard the joke and she fucking lost her mind. Like she called, she called <laughs> Music Plus and started yelling at the receptionist. And the receptionist had no idea what was going on. But this woman, the receptionist picks up and the woman starts yelling. She's like, you should never dig a dead person out of the ground to suck their penis. <laughs> and she was like, oh, okay, I'm gonna try to control myself. And she, like she hung up. But this fucking weirdo kept on calling the station. Then they transferred her to the legal department. Every, like all TV networks have legal departments. Real networks have real lawyers. Uh, the Quebecois MTV doesn't have lawyer money. So the guy, the legal department at Music Plus is one guy that went to college. And he, and he didn't actually go to college. He went to college to sell hash. So he, he picks up the phone, this woman is like, you should never, and then she's yelling about sucking dick and dead people, and he's like, is this a Mike Ward joke? And, and she's like, yes, and then he, she told him the joke, he laughed, which got her even madder, but he explained to the woman, he was like, look, this is, this is legal, it's like, it's in, in poor taste, it's in fucking horrible taste, but it, it's legal, it's cable television, you're allowed saying shitty things on cable television, the only thing that's illegal in Canada on cable is hate speech, and he was like, this obviously isn't hate speech, he hung up, that fucking crazy woman called her lawyer, and they sued Music Plus saying that my joke was homophobic hate speech. Homophobic hate, and that shit actually went to court. Google it, it fucking went to court. There's a judge that had to listen to my little show to try to figure out if I was a homophobe or not, and we were found not guilty, because that's the least homophobic joke in the history of homophobia. A homophobe hates gay people. I love the gays so much, I want to dig them out of the ground to eat their assholes. I actually got that shit laminated. Like, as soon as we got the verdict, no one gets things laminated anymore, but I got it laminated and then framed. It's in my living room. Because here's the thing. I always thought that I wasn't a homophobe, but now I have proof, which is, <laughs> which is awesome. Because are you a homophobe? You are a homophobe? Okay, okay but you're, you're, you're not. You, are you gay? God damn. <laughs> Is this your special or my special? Cause you're like, you're like, are you a homophobe? I am a homophobe. And then he's like, oh shit, I don't have any, I don't have anything else. I'm not a homo, I'm gay. Oh shit, oh fuck. All right, he's gonna ask me to suck a dick. All right, I don't know. No, but you're allowed being a heterosexual and, uh, and not sucking dick. If, or, or he could suck dick. Is this the first time like uh, that you hear that your boyfriend, is he your boyfriend? Okay, he's not, okay. So is he actually gay, but he's just like super nervous and he's like, <laughs> oh fuck, I'm gay. No, I'm not gay. All right. You'd be the worst guy in a gay bar. You'd be like, the guy would be like, do you want to come back to my place? You'd be like, I'm gay. And then you'd be like, I'm not gay, I'm a homophobe. I'm gay. Fuck you. Then you'd run away. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I've never been, I've never been homophobic, even in the old days when pretty much everyone was homophobic. And this, the reason why I know I was never homophobic, when, uh, when I first met my wife, when we were just dating, uh, she, we, we watched gay porn together once. And this is years ago, in the old days when you had to go out and rent gay porn, like a fucking pilgrims. So we went, <laughs> Like in a video, so my wife, I remember like we were, she was just my girlfriend. We had just moved in together and she comes home after work and she's like, I want us, I want us to watch gay porn. I was like, okay, okay. And she was like, it'd be fun, it'd be fun. And I was like, she doesn't know what fun means, but she, 
She was like, no, it'd be fun to watch gay porn as a couple. And here's the thing, I'm not a homophobe. I'm comfortable with my sexuality. I was like, she wants to watch gay porn. We're gonna watch gay porn. I was like, I'm comfortable enough with my manhood to see fucking two guys fuck each other. We're, okay, I'm comfortable, good. We're, we're all right, we're renting gay porn. So we go to the video store. My wife goes into the video store. I wait in the car, cause I'm more comfortable in my car, but still. <laughs> She got this movie, and it was a movie with firemen. There were two firemen that, uh, by the way, I don't think they were real firemen. But they, they were dressed up like firemen. They're in a little fire station, firehouse, and one of them looks at the other one and goes, I hope there isn't a fire tonight, because it's just you and just me, and I don't know if we're strong enough to put out a fire, just you and just me. And the first guy goes, you look strong enough. Show me your muscles. So the first guy rips all of his clothes off to show his muscles. Like, it was really well written. So the guy, the guy's fuck, he's buck naked, he's rock hard. The other guy just fucking gets on his knees, starts sucking his dick, right away, right away. Fucking didn't even ask. He just sucking his dick, sucking his dick. And I was like, I was comfortable. I was like, God damn, God damn, that was that escalated quickly. But I was, I was comfortable and I was like, good for that. I'm good for them. That's a fucking good, that's a yes, the yay, the team spirit. And they were fucking blowing each other. And my wife was so turned on. She was so, like, I, I did, like, she didn't tell me she was turned on, but I know her and she was masturbating. So she's <laughs> masturbating. The guys are blowing each other. I'm comfortable. After a while, one guy starts fucking the other guy in the ass. So he's fucking them in the ass. I'm, I'm still comfortable. But I'm watching them fuck each other in the ass. And that's when I realized that she wasn't even watching the movie anymore. Like, she, she was still there, but she, I, I was the only one watching the movie. She was looking at me. She was watching me watch them, and that was turning her on way more. Like, she started coming towards me, started coming towards me, started rubbing my chest, rubbing my belly. She grabbed my dick, went to pull it out to suck on it. That's when I said, no, no, I'm watching a movie. Okay, because I... I'm comfortable enough for gay porn, but my penis isn't ready. My penis, my penis was scared shitless. My penis wanted to call 911, but he was afraid the fucking firemen were gonna show up. <laughs> have you, have you ever uh, tried Viagra? No. I'm not gonna ask this guy, cause he's gonna do 12 minutes on Viagra. <laughs> He'll be like, no, I never tried Viagra, I'm on Cialis. Have you ever tried Viagra? No, ever? You neither? No. You guys, how about you? That'd be fucking awesome in your Bermuda shorts, <laughs> your fucking dick just popping out the bottom. Cause Viagra, Vi like all you guys are young. This is the fucking time you gotta use Viagra. Viagra is so good when you're young. Cause I've, I tried Viagra once and then uh, I tried it a bunch of other times, but <laughs> Viagra is so good. I remember the first time I took Viagra, I was with my wife and uh, we like, it wasn't even real Viagra. I bought shitty fake Viagra from the internet. And we were, we were in a restaurant, me and my wife, we're in a restaurant restaurant at lunch, we're, we're lunchtime, we're eating soup. My wife goes to the bathroom and I was like, oh fuck, I don't have anything today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop a pill, then we'll go home, we'll fuck, it'll be amazing. And I didn't think they were gonna work, so I popped two pills. I popped two fucking fake Viagras and they work. They really, really work. Like those guys don't know how to measure, but they fuck, like it, I, I was, like she came over, she came back from the bathroom and she touched me, but she didn't touch me like in a sexual way. She touched me in a soup eating way. Like she, like she just put her hand on my, my on, uh, on my hand and she was like, pas mon sel. She said, pas mon sel, pass the salt in French. And I don't know if it was the friction or the French that got me hard, but I, I I got hard and I wasn't that hard, but I was still too hard for someone eating soup. So I was like, I, I, like, I freaked out. I told my wife, I was like, okay, fuck it. We're going home, we're going home. We gotta go home. And she was like, no, no, I, I'm eating. I was like, put your soup in your purse, we're going home. And we, we went home and we fucked and it was the best. It was, the, it was so good. It was so good at first, cause you don't come on Viagra. You don't come. So we were fucking hard. Like after 10, 20, 30 minutes, I wasn't coming and I was like, this is so good. I'm not coming, I'm not coming, this is the best. After 40 minutes, I was like, this is, I'm not coming. After 50 minutes, I was like, why aren't I coming? Like, I, it was weird, cause all I, and plus, like I, I don't have good cardio, I'm not in good shape. So at first, like the first 10 minutes, I was actually going at it pretty fast. But after like 30, 40 minutes, I was going like this, I was like, oh, why? God damn, I gotta come, I gotta, I gotta. And all I could do was think about those fucking Viagra commercials that end with the warning that goes, if the erection lasts for more than four hours, contact your doctor. And I was like, oh fuck, I live in Quebec, I don't have a doctor. And I was, I wanted to fucking. 
Yeah, Michael Moore lied about that one. But I was like, I, I really want to come. And my wife wanted me to come way more the one, like, than I did. Because we've been together 19 years. So this body can't keep a woman wet for, <laughs> after 19 years for more than two minutes, okay? This, for real, like, for real. Like, this, like my, she, this was the sound that was coming out of my wife's pussy after an hour. It sounded like this. It sounded like... <laughs> Except slower. It was more like... <laughs> like, it was dry. Holy fuck. Was she dry. Like, I was afraid her vagina was going to catch on fire. Like, I... And I, I, I was like, I, I didn't know what to do, but then I got an idea. I was like, oh, fuck, I'm going to fake an orgasm. Gonna fi my wife's been doing that for years. It's my turn. I'm going to fake an orgasm. I'm going to do, like, what they do in porn. Because I don't know if you've... Like, in porn, whenever the guy comes in porn, they never... Like, they're all on Cialis and Viagra now, so whenever they say they're gonna come, they don't actually come. They pull their dick out and they jerk off first, and I'm sorry if you've never seen porn. I'm sorry to ruin the ending, but that's... So I was like, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull my dick out and jerk off super fast. She won't even notice. That's what I did. Pull my dick out, and I was like, I'm coming. I'm coming. Almost. 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 By the time I came, she wasn't even there anymore. She... She was in the kitchen eating soup, but... <laughs> it was good. So you guys, do you ever, like, uh, you, she, she still blows you, right? Okay. And do you ever, do you ever stick a finger up his ass? No, not yet. Not yet. Oh, God damn. That sounds like he's been waiting for that forever. Forever. That means every time you're like, I'm going to suck your dick, he's like, I'm ready. All right. I'm ready. You can suck my dick whenever you want. <laughs> No, because you should. Like, because uh, the male G-spot is in the asshole. And uh, my, my, when I started dating with my, my wife, she used to stick a finger up my ass when she'd suck my dick, and then she stopped for some reason. And uh, so sometimes when I masturbate, I'd stick things up my own ass. And you're not supposed to tell people you do that because <laughs> they fucking judge you like you guys are doing. And I, I realized this. I, I told my friend. I went to my friend's house, and I told him. I was like, sometimes when I masturbate, I stick things up my ass. And he was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? So I knew he was going to try it soon. And he, he did it. He tried it that fucking day. He was dating this girl that was super jealous. So he could never leave his house without her thinking that he had cheated on her. So he never left the house. And I, like, when I went to see him, I was at his place. I left. And then he was alone in his house for a couple of hours. And he started looking around the house to find something he could stick up his ass. And the, like, he looked in his girlfriend's like, vibrator drawer, and everything was too big for his uh, petite rectum. So he, he, took, he took this. Like, he looked around the house. The only thing he found that could fit was this. He found a screwdriver, like a little screwdriver. So he was like, and not the metal part, but he was like, he was like, I'll put a condom over the plastic part and stick that up my ass. That's what he did. And I don't know if he enjoyed himself, but he did it twice. So I guess, I guess he liked it, but he never told, he never told his girlfriend. His girlfriend got home and he didn't tell her. She was like, she got home. She's like, what'd you do today? And he was like, nothing, nothing. And I, no, nah, well, I don't know. I don't know why you're talking about that. And he was, he was like super nervous and shifty. And she was like, why the fuck is he so nervous? And she, he was so nervous that she was sure that he had cheated on her. So she went to the bedroom, grabbed a box of condoms, started counting the condoms in the box, lost her fucking mind when she saw the two were missing. She went back to the living room and she was like, is that, whose alarm is that? Okay, no problem. This is like the last minute of the show too. <laughs> You know how shitty that is? That should end the special. I'd be like, fine, fuck you, da 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 What was the alarm for? Because I'm working on the upload on night shift, so normally I wake up at that time. Okay, okay. All right, okay. I thought you were, like, you were on call at the hospital and it was like someone died and I'm like, fuck that guy! Fuck, fuck Mr. Johnson, this is my big chance. That fucking asshole, I'm happy he died. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so we, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll, 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 yeah, I'll do the joke over from, from the middle and then, you know how fucking, this, yeah, it's fucking... This, you ever see a comic uh, that gave up? That's pretty much what it looks like. 
All right, now. No, but yeah, so, so I'll start over. So you know what? I know. <laughs> no, so, so my friend, my, my, my friend, his, his girlfriend comes home from work and she's like, what'd you do today? And he was all nervous. He was like, I didn't do anything. And she's like, you didn't. He was super shifty. And the fact that he was shifty, she was sure he had cheated on her. So she goes to the bedroom, grabs a box of condoms, starts counting the condoms in the box. She saw two were missing. She lost her fucking mind. She was like, she, she went back to the living room. She was like, you fucking cheated on me. And he was like, no, I did Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You fucking cheated on me. I counted the condoms in the box. Two are missing. If you didn't cheat on me, what did you do? <laughs> and he was like, I, I, I had a, I, I, I cheated on you. And you guys have been amazing. Thank you very much, folks. Thanks to the food.